In today's video, we are taking a look at my updated 2022 house prediction as of today, July 7th of 2022. So without further ado, let's get right into today's prediction. Here on your screen right now does show the seats that I consider to be safer for both parties. The red seats being for the Republican Party and the blue seats being on the, for the Democratic Party. Now some of these characterizations, they weren't made by me. I just found this map on ympms.com. So I'm going to fill it in and I'm going to adjust some of the margins as we go through it. So starting with the first state, Washington. The state of Washington has one capacity currently held by a Democratic incumbent running for re-election. He's going to see the binded win by, um, I, by, I believe, 8 percentage points, but the incumbent there is not necessarily a very strong one, and therefore I do give the seat to the Republican Party. The Democratic Party, however, I believe will hold both Oregon seats. The new district, which was went to Biden by a margin of 13 point some points by a lead margin, considering it is an open race. That being said, this race is pretty solid for the Democratic Party, the tilt race being the other one. The race that Biden won by a margin of less than nine. That being said, although the national environment is not favorable for the Democratic Party, I do expect them to hold on to both of the seats there and gain one because Oregon did gain one congressional district. Going to next day of California, this district, this map is more complicated. Now, starting with the two Republican incumbents in trouble, and probably I'd say that the only, the, the two of the three only really competitive seats held by Republican incumbents, who in many polls have been lagging behind or not doing super well or have their districts being pretty Democratic. Starting with the first one, this seat being held by the by the Republican incumbent David G. Valdeo. He is in a seat that is, frankly speaking, quite competitive. Not quite competitive. It went to buy by ten. He won his seat by a margin of one percentage point. However, given the national environment, I do give the seat to the Republican Party. Similar story in the in the seat for Mike Garcia. I think that he is a pretty popular incumbent, similar to David G. Valdeo, should be able to win re-election. That being said, I do believe this seat currently held by a Democratic incumbent should go to Democrats' runs again by a tilt margin. And we, if we look at these two seats in the Los Angeles area, let me pull it on, pull it, um, pull it up on the political website. You can see um, you can you probably won't be able to see, but right around this region here, there are two rep um, one Democratic incumbent Katie Porter and one Republican incumbent Michelle Steele. Five thirty eight gives both of them a sixty forty chance of winning re-election. I think both of them have about a seventy thirty chance at winning their respective election. So I will put both of those faces as lean for both parties. For the state of Nevada, here we have three competitive races, of course. The, for, uh, the district, um, the, the seat of Nebraska second, currently held by a Republican incumbent, easily going to go Republican, but the other three seats are quite competitive. I'm going to start off with Nevada's fourth congressional district. With the Democratic incumbent there, most indications does, see, does seem that she'll be able to win re-election. Nevada's first, first district, I believe. Sorry, the 4th District will go with the Democratic Party, the 3rd District with Susie Lee. I do believe, however, will go to the Republican Party by a very narrow margin. This district is not super favorable for the Republican Party at all. For the Democratic Party as all, at all, Biden barely won the seat. Susie Lee, although a decent incumbent, is, isn't that good of an incumbent, did not overrun Biden by 8 good enough margin for me to believe that she'll be able to win, win real election. And Nina Titus as well was previously in a seat that was like deep of 30. Right now the seat is far more competitive, but I do not believe that he'll be able to win real election. So that will be a tilt seat for the Republicans, and Republicans are now at 218 with a majority. Their, their majority will only grow if we go to the state of Arizona. Going to the state of Arizona, right here, you can see that the, this map is quite unfavorable for the Democratic Party. The second district becomes becomes from De Democrat plus 1.8 to Trump plus 8.4. 
the 6th district becomes 10.5 points less Democratic, and the 1st district becomes 5.7% more Republican leaning, but there is a Republican incumbent in a bad Democratic environment, so that seat should still go for the Democratic Party and should still go for the Republican Party. And the seat that the Democrats currently hold, I also expect to go to the Republicans as well, given that the seat is like 10 points more Republican leaning. Going to New Mexico with a Republican incumbent, the incumbent here is in danger given that he, she is in a Democratic seat by three to four points. That being said, Yvette Harrell is expected to win by 538, and most forecasters do have her winning re-elections. I'm going to put this as a lean seat for the Republican Party. Going to Texas here, I do have a seat for the Republican Party as well. The seat I should have filled up, I didn't. I forgot to do so. And this seat right here that was previously competed in John 20, not expected to necessarily be that in that status in John 22 will get a Republican by safe margin. The open seat again without a Democratic or Republican incumbent. I do believe this race again. I did not mention this, but Biden actually lost the seat, so I do believe the Republicans will be able to flip the seat for the Democratic Party. More for Henry Killer and Jessica Cisneros. Their primary was very contentious. Many progressives are not going to vote for Henry Kular, and he is under investigation by the FBI. All that being said, I do give this race to the Republican Party very narrowly. That being said, that could easily change as more time goes on. First in North Carolina, here we have a open seat, a new seat that was drawn in due to the fact that North Carolina gained a district. I do have this seat as a seat that goes to the Republicans by a margin. This seat did go for buying vote, but it was for a extremely narrow margin in the national environment, again, not good for the Republican Party. For the majority black seat of, I believe, the first district in the state of North Carolina, we're going to pull it up right here. So for the state of North Carolina, the seat also went for Joe Biden. It was a 8.9% victory. That being said, the incumbent there, um, I'm pretty sure, is not running for re-election, and the seat, um, it's not super favorable for a Democratic Party, so, but it is still a seat that Biden did win by almost double digits, so I'm gonna digits, so I'm gonna put this race as a tilt seat for a Democratic Party. Going to the state of Minnesota, this race with Andre Craig. Andre Craig won by less than three points. Not extremely strong incumbent. This race did not get more Democratic. The seat did not get more Democratic, I shall say. So I will give the seat to the Republican Party. Going to the state of Illinois, this race, this competitive seat right here <laughs> is an open seat. It has been gerrymandered as some um, other seats, for example, in Texas to favor Republicans to show up their Republican incumbents, or for seat, um, for seats like Illinois, which are gerrymandered towards the Democratic Party, in which they short up their own seats as well. That being said, the national environment, I don't think it's necessarily too favorable for the Democratic Party, so I do believe they will lose the seat despite its heavy gerrymander. And I think that the seat currently held, I'm going to have to pull up the map. So I can talk a, talk a little bit better. So for the state of Illinois, for the state of Illinois, the seat that is that does hold a Democratic incumbent that won in 2018 and flipped the seat for the Republican Party, I do believe the seat will be a lean seat, although it did go for Biden by 11 and similar story in the newly drawn seat that basically kicked out the Republican incumbent. For the state of Michigan, we have three seats here. Peter Major in the for in this district right here in a district near the Grand Rapids area. Well, the two more Democratic seats carrying the Flint, Oak, carrying some of the Flint area. That is, these seats are pretty competitive. Starting from the first seat here, Peter Major in his seat. He is expected to win by 538 by 10 points. This is not at all accurate. This is a pretty much a toss-up seat at this point in time. But uh, but if he loses that primary, it does not look very good for the Republican Party. If he loses that primary, but I think he'll win it. So if he does win it, it will be a tilt seat for the Republican Party. Going to the seat of 
Michigan 8th. I do believe the Democrat can come, but there still has a pretty good chance of winning. I'll put this as a tilt seat for her, but for the Democrats in the other seat, I don't think it looks things look too good for them. The Democratic incumbent, according to 538, is on a 50 50 chance. I don't believe that's very accurate, especially because Lisa Stock can. <clears throat> 538 typically overestimates incumbents, so I'm going to put this seat as a seat that goes to the Republicans by a margin. Going to the state of Ohio with another, again, another three competitive seats. Starting with the, this seat right here, this is around the Akron area. I do put this seat as a lean seat for the Republican Party. There are no incumbents in this race, a newly drawn seat without any incumbents. I do put this seat as a lean Republican seat. It is trending Republican heavily. And the seat, I believe, barely voted for Joe Biden. As well as that, the seat with a currently a Democratic incumbent, Marcy Caper. I don't think Marcy Caper will be able to hold on. Her district has been much more competitive and much rep more Republican leaning. The trends don't look good for her either. But for Steve Shabbat, I do think that he'll end up nearly losing re-election given the seat is very democratic as it stands right now. So, we're going to go to New England in which we'll, we'll finish off this video. Starting from the state of Virginia right outside the New England area, we have a Virginia Beach, Chester, Chester we have a Virginia Beach area seat with Chesapeake. Near the, near the Virginia, also in this seat right here, currently held by a Democratic incumbent, Aline Luria. I don't think she's going to win. She is a mod, not moderate, but not a very good, not super electable candidate. I mean, she's decent, but many voters, I think, might not like buying his handling of the economy. He is at a, he is, his approval rating is in the high 30s. So given that, a seat for the Republican Party. I also think that Abigail Spanberger, not her year, going to give this seat to the Republican Party. That being said, for the state of Maryland, the seat is still pretty Democratic. I think I'll still give the seat to the Democratic Party as well. It is a seat that vote for Biden by 10, but many seats that do vote for Biden by eight, around a 8 or 9 point margin. Might as well flip to the Democratic P Republican Party. One of those seats might be Virginia with the Abigail Spamberger seat. We also have the seat in Illinois. So many eight to nine point seats for Joe Biden might flip for the Republican Party. But I think Maryland, the Democratic incumbent, should hold on. Going to Pennsylvania, Connor Lamb seat without a Democratic incumbent. Who is running for Senate last at Democratic Senate primary? I think will be a lean seat for the Republican Party, similar to thing of Susan Wilde. He's in a toss up seat according to 538 in the even national environment, but again, the national environment is exactly even, so I'll have that seat as a lean Republican seat as well. So for this seat right here, also in the New York City area, let's see here. So I'm actually confused. Okay, I'm actually kind of confused by 538. For the state of New York, um, just wait for a second. Right here, New York, with its 22nd district, actually became less Democratic. That's not a good sign for the Democratic Party. I think they'll end up losing this seat. As well as that the seat below it, currently, I believe, has a Democratic incumbent. Um, has a Democratic incumbent who is now Lieutenant Governor Antonio Delgado. The seat, I also expect the Republicans to be able to win. That being said, the seat down here, a 18 point, the 18th district is a Biden plus 8.5 seat. I do expect the Democrats to nearly hold that seat on. And going to New Hampshire, the two incumbents here, and Crisper and Chris Pappas. Chris Pappas is in a more Republican seat, so I do expect him to lose, but... and. I forgot how to pronounce her name, but she's probably going to end up winning by total margin. Finally, Jared Golden up in Maine doesn't look very good for him. He's going to lose by a lane margin. So, um, do I actually have a seat th that I missed? I probably do uh, in the state of Colorado, in which case that seat will go to the Republican Party. It's a seat that's trending Democrat, but it's not going to help them in 2022. So, 
Republicans at 239, Democrats at 196. I believe a net change of one for the Democrats in their favor, not much of a change. Again, thanks for watching. Have a nice day. I'll see you guys all tomorrow or in my next video, and bye.